Vad vill han? So, is this working? Oh, great. Awesome. Hey, Toke. Hey, Amisha. Hey, Monica. Hey Tsukabu and Patricia. Hi guys. Yay. <laughs> there are people at the new place. <laughs> I have coffee. Coffee. Yeah! Yep, yep. Hold on. Up. Yeah, I have a small pad of Fabriano Artistico uh, cold press. And I also have a, a pad. Well, this one is a block, actually. Yeah. This one is a pad of Windsor and Newton. I want to grab a sheet of this one and cut it in half. <laughs> five by five? Hey Marla! <laughs> Me, my, myself, and D. Who are and I. But anyway, hi! Hi, Bluesman! Hi, Sarah! Hold on, I need to get the, um, the cutter thingy. for caffeine yeah like there is a, a medication I take for anxiety that has as a side effect to make you sleepy and I tried many things but so far the only one that has really worked is to switch to coffee and drink even more tea in the day <laughs> not ideal but I still need to be able to do stuff. So that's my solution for now. Why did you decide to make another channel? Um, I will explain. I think I will wait a few minutes for possibly more people to to come in so I don't have to uh, explain it many many times I have Mountain Dew kickstart for my stream just today ooh so 5x5 five five means the signal has excellent strength and perfect clarity oh nice awesome hey Anna hey Kukatsunjan it's been a while I think 
Hey, Sun. Hey, the naughty printmaker. Hi, guys. <laughs> yeah, those cutters are quite handy, but uh, you kind of have to replace the blade. And it's a bit annoying. I think a guillotine cutter might be better for that. You don't really have to replace the choppy part. Hey, Melissa! Oh, your son's current play! Awesome! Uh, break a leg! <laughs> yeah, that's the issue with the 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 cutter the trim trim cutter anyway um is that if at some point they decide to stop making the the blades the replacement blade for it you have to buy a whole new cutter that's so silly oh thank you so much melissa melissa says but i wanted to stop by to help support the new channel oh thank you so much says uh, Ev found out the reason for my laptop crash was a power surge almost lost a new laptop this morning now I'm on battery until it's turned that sounds awful you would think that the people who figure out power and electricity and stuff would possibly consider <laughs> not um, not setting it up so it surges <laughs> I don't know Yeah, those, uh, those cutters are not super difficult to find. Um, when I, I, I still kind of shopped around when I was looking for mine because I wanted one that you could at least replace the blade if they got dull. But yeah, it, it's kind of the advantage is that it doesn't take a lot of space if you compare to a guillotine cutter. But it's more short lived, I think. All right, so yeah, the new channel. Um, I was well, I was chatting with Otto, and we were talking about YouTube stuff, and uh, she mentioned to me that the uh, the um, the way YouTube works, uh, it it doesn't help grow my channel if I uh, have regular video like like the videos that I edit and voiceover. Uh, interspersed between live streams. As it is, I usually have like one one edited video and then a live stream, then an edited video, then another live stream, and you know, so on and so forth. Because I tend to do those live streams every Saturday for Cato Day. Um, so yeah, so when I post a regular video, it has different involvement and engagement and stats than a live stream. And the live stream, they sort of pull all the analytics, all the statistics down. Because there are super long videos that overall are less watched. And um, it's, it's YouTube numbers and algorithm and stuff. But yeah, we, we, we were talking about it. And it feels like having a separate place for the live streams would at least not interfere with the main channel and the regular videos. So I might be able to grow my channel more because I think in at least a year, my channel channel has barely grown. And I don't know if it's through me not posting enough stuff or I can't exactly say why. Perhaps my content is not just, just it has reached its full potential. I don't know, but I figured that there was no big loss in trying to s separate the live stream from the regular videos and see what happens. Oh, Patricia says that she googled the power surge caused by either faulty wiring or an appliance in the house pulling too much power. Yikes. Ew. It's okay, Amisha, no problem. 
as long as it doesn't fall into like absolute mayhem <laughs> letter mayhem you're fine you're fine Placement limits in here. Nope. Hold up. <laughs> Typing is always hard. That's very true. Hey, Alex. Hi. Jesus. Sorry about that. Okay. Is everything... <laughs> Mayhem. See, hi. Yeah, that that fell down. <laughs> right. So, what I figured I wanted to try today was to. Um, do some quite simple drawings on different papers that are not my usual arches paper to see if their grain are possibly a bit more um, flat and to see if they take colored pencil better than arches. Arches takes colored pencil but it's very textured so you cannot really uh, you cannot really be super precise or like, if you want the grain to be less present, it's difficult. Hey, Otto! Oh, no. I've been trying to change my flights to Japan for the last three hours. And it's not, it's not coming through. Still not happened. Oh, good grief. I'm so sorry it, it, it's, it's that difficult. Yeah, I agree. The 50 facts about Otto video was really great. You said a thing in there that uh, made me laugh because you said you don't read fiction. And I was like, oh, oh, that's possibly the, f the first thing between us that is drastically different. I think almost everything I read is fiction, like young adult fiction books. Not that I read a lot, but whenever I get to it, it's usually like that stuff. <laughs> So should I draw humans, humanoids, or cats today? I 
wait, what? But it says they will change flights only if I pay a lot more than just the flight changing fee. But that doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you want to change your flight, the flight changing fee should be uh, <laughs> should be sufficient. No, what a nonsense. One of each, cats. Sometimes you just need fluffy nonsense to get you by. Yeah, that's basically my approach to YA, and it's it's like super. Sometimes it, it gives me like drawing ideas, so I, I doodle fan art and whatnot. Since I'm I'm possibly more. My tendency is definitely to draw. <laughs> Um, um, not abstract things, if I can say that. Hum yeah, it, it's gonna be humanoid cats. Because I figured I want to... With cats I can do like tabbies, which have a lot of pattern. Z. <laughs> and I also printed, and you can see how my printer is absolutely... <laughs> Um, trippy. But yeah, I, I printed some sort of references for embroidery just to see how that would translate to watercolor and color pencil, possibly. So yeah. Both, please. Galleons. Cats. Oh. Okay, I need to grab a, another book for cat references. <sighs> this book. You guys have seen this one before. All right, I'll start with a cat. Oh no. If you have trip cancellation insurance, I would cancel and rebook. It won't kick in because I am canceling it rather than the airline canceling it. You would think that with everything that's going on with COVID-19, they would possibly be a bit more um, accommodating. Yeah, it's some really beautiful references. It's what a shame that they printed so badly though, but... All right. And I picked up, uh, it might not show a lot, but I picked up a, a pencil with a colored lead because I will not be inking this technically. I will be like cleaning up the line work as best I can, but I will be directly painting over it. So I prefer to have colored lines for that because graphite tends to dull everything. Cancellation insurance are for when the airline cancels your flight, not if you choose to cancel it. Ugh. It is really annoying. Like it's, it, they are still getting the business just on a later date. Like why? Why? I'm 
Sorry. Tomorrow is oh, Fasteloven. Sorry, I probably said that all sorts of wrong, but. Which is a Danish tradition where you fill a barrel with candy and beat it like a pinata. A pinata, and the person who hits the barrel and the bottom falls become the cat queen. That's adorable! I think today also is Love Your Cat Day in Japan. Because I. Th I don't know, but the the vague memory I have of it, it's because it's the 22 of February, so 222, two, two, and like if you read that as such in in Japanese, it's like ni ni ni, and it sounds a bit like a cat, something like that. Oh, it is British Airways. Yeah, they probably wouldn't even lose money because some would try to book a last minute flight. I agree, Lana. Sorry. <laughs> I'm already the cat queen. Aww. I'm curious what that book you showed that had the black cat on the front. The great cat, you mean? This one. The complete cat breed. So far, it is the best reference book I've found for the way I like to use reference in that it has many, many breeds of cats and enough pictures per cat to give you a good idea of how they look. So I can use that to um, like to draw the markings or the pattern on the coat or the colors or the... If a cat is like more slender, that's something I can use. I don't know if it shows well in the camera. But yeah, it has many, many... Uh, Cats, cat breeds, breeds of cat. And also there's a part in the beginning that explains like uh, cat color, coat colors and patterns. Understanding coat colors, you have the way the hair is colored. Sorry. I've been having some, uh, some acid reflux issues lately, so I apologize for that. Uh, so yeah, you have like the name of the, 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 the type of coats Party colors, dirty colors, pointed, white spotting, tabby colors, types of tabby, tabbies, and all of that. I mean, it has some more generic info in the beginning, but after that, you get to all the cat breeds, and it's 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 good reference. Not that I would never. I, I'm not for purchasing a specific breed of cat. For me, that's not important, but it's still good reference, so I don't end up drawing always the same cat, the same orange tabby <laughs> all the time. Oh, sorry. Then the person who beats the last plank off the barrel becomes the cat king. And the reason to why it's cat queen king, it's because of the old days. You used to fill the barrel with what? No! Uh, that took a turn! You used to fill the barrel with cats and beat them to death. No, 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 just no. Yikes, that took a left turn. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the kitties in the book, they, they seem to be doing quite good. Hey, Lee, hi! <laughs> I really enjoyed our, our, our talk of a banana candy yesterday. That was funny. It is a DK book. It is... Um, I don't know if you guys can see ISBN on this and pause eventually to see it. But yeah, it's a DK book. It's titled The Complete Cat Breed Book. 
it's quite affordable too it's like twenty dollars and it's a really nicely well put together book it's a that like that's the one I like to use to reference um, when comes the time to color a cat to paint the coat and all of that for poses I have a different type of books that I really enjoy using because the poses are really natural but sometimes you have a harder time seeing like how the patterns are or what's the markings and all of that. Hey Mikey! Yeah, I can't celebrate the Kitty Killing Festival. I couldn't either. That's so wrong. It was back in the Renaissance. Yeah, it's a good thing we got rid of that though. Good. Good everything. Stop it. Writing that down now. Do you need any more info? But it's it's kind of easy to find on like Amazon and... Oh, Otto, thank you. Otto has put the link to it. It's a really, really nice book. So there's always a couple of funny things when I draw cats. Like they usually don't really have shoulders. The default way I draw cats, like humanoid cats, they don't have shoulders. So it's really, <laughs> it's really difficult to sort of like implement elements that are designed to be on the shoulder width. Yeah, we're fine with... Um... Do you still pre-stretch your paper using the Ken Bromley or Auto Stretcher? I don't do it enough. Um, you really have to think in, in advance to sort of set everything up, but I miss it. I miss uh, the auto stretcher. I have a bit of a harder time figuring out how to uh, efficiently stretch the paper because that's the one I've noticed. Like if I stretch the paper on it, um, it's a bit... Uh, difficult to paint directly on it because of the border and if I remove you can sort of remove the borders and and remove the paper once it's stretched and dry but if I cut it and glue it to something else it still kind of buckle a tiny bit though the, the Ken Bromley stretcher is absolutely amazing nothing buckles on there but yeah you need to have space and time to prep it up and let it dry so I should always prepare sheets at the end of the day, but I always forget. So that I can <laughs> leave them to dry overnight and I forget. But yeah, oh my gosh, the, the Ken Bromley one is amazing. I wish they made a, <laughs> a smaller one. I always end up, I have the quarter imperial sheet one, which is still kind of big. And I always end up making two drawings on it. <laughs> Oh, that's comforting, Alex. Wow, Otto, you're on fire with the links. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, that's easy. I pronounced it in French. Which is maybe closer to the Danish. <laughs> hey, Kevin, hi. Ooh, Ken Bromley's one now has a full imperial size one. Um, is it is it new? <laughs> Ask Otto for links. It takes her mind away from stupid British airways. But yeah, the um, the quarter sheet stretcher by Ken Bromley. That's the one I have. It's it's really nice, but like my space is really small, and I usually paint. The bigger, the biggest I paint is 9 by 12 you've seen me. I usually paint like 6 by 9 so having this big panel, I always end up putting a, a tape in the middle and splitting it in half. 
and then I, I work on one side and then I work on the other side and I'm all cramped up because space but yeah that's probably something I should fix on my side not necessarily something that that can Bromley should cater to <laughs> You just applied to art school for animation. Which school, Kevin? What would your fab size be for a Ken Bromley stretcher? Um, if there's something that can accommodate nine by twelve, so the printing, the painting size would be smaller because of the way the paper is, um, like inserted in the stretcher and all of that. So you would end up with a smaller surface, but I would probably be able to still get a six by nine in there easily maybe a bit bigger and i i need to experiment more with the auto stretcher but it's really um different uh the do, do i need to do you guys have them in mind sort of what they look like because the, the ken bromley one is made that you use rubber um tubes to sort of insert the paper in in the stretcher itself and it's really taunt and taut taunt it's really really stretched out well and when it dries it's not gonna bulge it's not gonna do nothing <laughs> but be fun to paint on and another thing that i appreciate of that one is that it's everything is paper you don't have any borders you don't have anything the paper goes all the way to the edge but um if you have the auto stretcher it's made that you have a, a sheet and then you use sort of things that you clamp to the sides to hold the paper in place. And those either, they, <laughs> they kind of leave an imprint on the paper. So um, that's a bit unusual. And it's perhaps a bit more difficult to really get the paper stretched out well. The thing is, is with the Ken Bromley stretcher is that you can get 90 pound paper and it it's just as good if anything it's easier to set on the um on the stretcher because it is a bit thinner so once you soften it with water it's easier to taut okay taut taut um, it's really easier to work with thinner paper like the 90 pound paper so it's a bit less expensive in paper too So would you use a full imperial sheet stretcher? Jeez, how do you even wet paper that size? <laughs> In the bath? Like you need a pool to wet paper that size. Can you imagine you visit your artist friend's house and there's a pool in the back and hey, can I bring my swimming suit? No, 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 no. The pool is not for swimming. It's for paper. Shoo. <laughs> Don't get bacteria in my paper pool. How much paper gets pulled into the Ken Bromley? It's a substantial amount still. More than a half inch, closer to an inch. Because it is like the stretcher itself is smaller than a quarter sheet because you have to be able to wrap part of the paper around it. 
So there's enough paper to go in the gouge and there's always a bit that still like is left over there. There, uh, they have a video explaining the process of uh, stretching the paper and setting it in the uh, the stretcher, and it's a really well made video. The cat in my drawing looks smug. Yeah, I like smug cats. <laughs> I always wonder how people use those rolls of paper. That's a that's a good point. There is some paper waste, but regardless of the stretching method you use, there is paper waste. If you use the brown gum tape, you cannot remove that from paper, so you, you necessarily have to cut that off. Oh, I didn't print the um, the info about the references. I just um, sorry. Oh, sorry. I have um, a Pinterest board of various clothing reference, and I don't necessarily have the info next to it. Oh, well, Otto has put the video about the uh, Ken Bromley stretcher in the chat. What you lose on the sides of the paper you gain by not having to use masking tape. Yeah, it's it's the same. It's the sacrifice is the same. It's either you lose uh, paper to the gum tape, or you lose paper to the the stretcher. Yeah, three hundred pound paper is great, but you cannot uh, light table through it, and it's so expensive. Well, it's not three hundred pounds actually. It's uh, uh, six hundred pounds. Because 300 pounds is... Wait. No, it is. It is correct. I am all confused between my GSM and my pounds. I saw a guy with the roll on the floor and the top taped six feet higher with... <laughs> uh, the thing with rolls of paper is that it's difficult to get the, the roll out of the paper. I look at the 300 pound paper price and my wallet screams in agony. Mine too. I agree, it's a couple. <laughs> it, is, it is like 20 bucks for an imperial sheet of it. Like, 20 bucks for an imperial sheet. You have to be really sure about what you're gonna do on that paper. It is an investment. Oh, 400 pounds, wow. Yeah, if you want to trace on thicker paper, you have to use tracing paper, but that can be a bit messy. Messy, not messy. All the cat hair over the wall as you try to cut it on the floor. Yeah, and it keeps, it's like, 
It's like wrapping paper, but worse. Misha says, every time I wince at the price of watercolor paper, I just look at the price of painting canvases and cheer right up. Is it expensive? I've never really had to buy canvases. And in that case, the cats must sit on it because it's convenient. Yeah, and if you are absolutely unlucky, the cats are going to scoot on it and wipe their bum on it. And then you're going to be like, but, but that's my, uh, that's my $200 roll of watercolor paper. Can you please not wipe your bum on it? You're finishing a sketchbook today, son. Awesome. Sorry about that. All right, now I need to decide which paints I'm going to use. And also with which color coat I want to paint with that cat. Oh, jeez. I feel so sorry for Persian cats. Uh, the, you know, the one with the super smushed nose. Like, it's not, it's not great for them. They don't get to experience like easy breathing. It's not nice. So that one is it doesn't have a squish nose, but it's adorable. A designer dwarf cat, never mind. There's a cross between the munchkin and the leperm. What? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> hey, Jennifer, hi! Okay, can I... Find... There, that's my favorite cat breed. House cat short hair. Just whatever goes. Whatever happens. <laughs> oh my gosh, that reminds me. Uh, at Kitten Academy, um, the youngest kittens they have at the moment, they're about what, two weeks old. They are so cute! One of them, like the, the one that is named Foghorn and is mostly white. 
Um, it, it, it has such a foofy tail for such a tiny cat. That's really funny. Hold on, let me find the King Kalu again. Where was it? I don't remember where it was. But it was a mix of a munchkin and something else. King Kalu. King Kalu. King something. Is there an index in there? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Okay. There it is. Okay. Kittens. King Kalu. Something. I don't know if you guys can see. The King Kalu and the Skookum. I hope it is, Lena. I don't know if that would be the case for every single country, but... Oh, Booty was a munchkin! Oh my gosh! Like, if it happens, it happens. But to breed the cats to get that result, that's something I don't appreciate. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, Otto says that Lana, ha, ha, the, 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 you guys have the best animal welfare guidelines, especially for rodents. That is that is like good to to see. But yeah, it's the Kinkalo was made by crossing the Munchkin with the American Curl. Munchkin is basically a cat with really short legs. On its on, I mean on its own. I think it's just something that can happen. But I am not. Ugh. Stuttgart. I found the Buenner's store less than three kilometers away. What? Ooh. Yeah, the brachycephalic flat face. It's, it's not ideal because it's, it's give, just gives them a hard time breathing. And I just don't think it's... I mean, if it happens, it happens. It, because I think that it technically is a genetic problem. So assuming you're not breeding a long line of short-nosed cat, flat-nosed cat, and suddenly you have a kitten that has a flat nose, well, it's just what it is. But to specifically breed this characteristics... Uh, this characteristic in cats. Oh, a tratty. Hello. Um, that's not cool. <laughs> I don't think it is, anyway. I'm really bothered by it. Alright. Give me something with a bit of a challenge. Pattern-wise. Oh, that's peculiar. A Seychellois. Distinctively patterned cats found in the Seychelles. The first crosses were between a Siamese and a Calico Persian. It's funny because they don't have any kind of long hair at all. But yeah, I mean, good grief. Breeding cats for specific goals is just weird. There, that's a pattern. Wiener dogs have many spine issues because of their short legs. That's one thing. It's it's quite fair to assume that uh, munchkin cats might run into the same issue. Yeah, that's the thing, though. It, it probably started as a few cases of, of shorter noses, and some people thought they would breed this characteristic more tightly in. And it's just... 
I think dogs have it worse in terms of, of breeding and all of that. It's fairly easy to find just domestic cats that are just a mix of whatever. Yeah, that, that's just my two cents too. If you guys are really, really want the specific breed, I guess that's your your stuff. Longford Him Himalayan Siamese mix. She didn't have the smoosh noise with the havoc level of floof. Oh, that's lovely. Like, if someone told me, okay, the only job you can do in the future is cat breeder, I think I would try to make it so you still keep it diversified. Like, not really... Like, try to make... create some appeal for the mix, not for the pure thing. For cats, it doesn't change a lot. I mean, they're all basically the same size. It's not like dogs where you have some really large dogs and some really, really small dogs. But yeah, I can ramble a lot on that topic, so it might be best not to. <laughs> so I think this is my second time using Fabriano paper only because I've used the samples that you can get from uh, um, Jackson's it's a beautiful cat Puri had no issue but when she was pregnant I was worried about her back she loved running up and down the stairs with her toys more like hopped <laughs> she was a feral, so not bred. Yeah, that's. I mean, I mean, for munchkins, it's really just a genetic thing that can happen, which is, I guess, kind of possibly the way that every specific characteristic happened a long time ago before they started breathing them specifically. Like you would have a litter of kitten, and one of them would have a squish nose, a squish nose. Oh my gosh, that sounds awful, Toki. Hey, Stephen, hi. Toki says, when I was in Turkey on vacation, and there were stray cats everywhere around the hotel and they were all hurt with scars and bleeding. Yeah, th there is a lot of stray cats in uh, Turkey. <laughs> it is weird that I'm not evolved. I'm sorry. That's unusual for me too. I'm like, wait, who... Why is it orange? That's not... Oh, yeah, that's me. Okay. Yes, I am using the Schminke paints today. Since I'm using unknown paper, I figured I would at least use paints that I know well enough. There is a documentary that I have still yet to watch. It's named Kedi, and it's about the cats in Turkey. The dribbles are settling into their new kitchen. Yay! Are, do they spend a lot of time uh, in the uh, bedding? I mean, if I was a gerbil and I had like a, such a huge pool of bedding, I think I would dig so much in it and just like have fun because it, it sounds fun, you know? <laughs> like, hey, I can spend time just buried into this floofy stuff that is not super heavy, so I don't feel squished, but at the same time, it feels safe. Yeah, Schminke. Well, the documentary is called Kedi. K-E-D-I. And it's, uh, it, it, I mean, I've seen the trailers and all of that, and it took some time before it was available and I bought it, but it's a Blu-ray and my, <laughs> my computer doesn't read Blu-rays, so I, I really have to, um, uh, make a, um, 
make it a thing at some point to settle in front of the TV. Maybe crochet while I watch. Are you guys going to watch the new live action Cats movie? Nope, not me. Nope, 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 nope. Like kids in a ball pit. <laughs> yeah, quite so. Uh, the ear color is magenta with a big with a bit of uh, this like orangey yellow in it. Oh yes, their main obsession is digging, which is why we wanted to give them this new cage. They get thirteen inches of bedding in this one. That sounds amazing. I think I watched Kitty on Amazon. Well, I don't think it's on Netflix or I would have seen it. I've seen a lot of the cat documentaries they have on Netflix, at least in Canada. The one about the tigers of Scotland is really, really fun to watch. They are so cute. What a cute um, wildcat, tiny wildcat. My painting is not fun. My camera is all. Oh, I think my camera moved when the light fell on it. <laughs> Which, you know, makes sense. Sorry about the camera moves. Yeah, that should be better, right? Uh, the documentary The Tigers of Scotland was on Netflix. Oh, uh, the pink and old brushes, I don't think you can find them anymore. They were a special edition on uh, the Treckle website. It's kind of sad that the... Uh, the writing is already wearing out though. But it was the Mab Graves collaboration. They regularly have limited editions. Like, I have a few of those because they're really appealing. This one was the uh, collection with Glenn Arthur. So you have like a really transparent orange here. So you see the wood through it, but the, the tip is black. I lost my reference. Oh, it's so far away. Ugh. And then they had these ones that are all black with black tackle on too. I gotta go fish up my reference, be right back. To all my fellow shorties out there, story of our lives is being this close to grabbing whatever we want to grab. <laughs> Well, I don't know if the Tigers of Scotland documentary is still on Netflix, but that's where I watched it. 
Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Well, that's where I watched it, but I don't know if it's still there. is a bit more like what Sterling does than like being this precise with stuff I'm like Ugh. yeah it's map graves uh, M A B graves I think I, I googled like tigers, well googled, I searched tigers on on Netflix to see if they would have stuff with big cats and then I saw that they had the tigers of Scotland one and I was like huh what's that? If, if Scotland has tigers it, it definitely another good reason to move my ass there. <laughs> I apologize for all the noises of the metal mug. <laughs> I've only ever had cats so I don't think I could have ever convinced my parents to get a rodent and every time we tried to have fishes it was a really sad failure
think that they would design cages to be easy to clean, no? It's a bit like the um, the the trap of the um, the cat litter box with a cover. You you would think that it works well, and you would you would think that it's gonna be like oh yeah, but the cat is gonna be you know everything is gonna be contained within this this box, and it's gonna be awesome, and it has a filter at the top, and yeah, it's nice and cool, but. Yeah, that, that doesn't really work out that way. First of all, the cats... I have fish blood on my hands. Do I? There's something I don't get. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, the, the... The cat litter box with lids. First of all, the, they keep this thing in the litter box and it sticks to the cat's coat so if you want to pet your cat and it just just went into the litter box well all you're gonna smell is cat poop and then they tend to be more difficult to maneuver for cats so the the, the likeliness of them stepping in their poop is much higher Oh, the fishies! <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't have a good... <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's what I don't have good. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know why. We, were, we weren't able to take care of fishes and it would be so sad every time that at some point we just stopped. But you know, most of the fishes I had as a kid, they were never fishes that I had bought. They were always like things in school where you, oh you just won a fish and then you would go home with this fish in a plastic bag and your parents would be like what am i supposed to do with this now One time in um, school, you know, sometimes they would have, <laughs> I'm just going to call them social experiments in classes, like say, oh, you have hamsters and you have to take care of the hamsters and you split the students in groups of, I don't know, four students and there's one hamster to take care of, of for each group, you know. And at some point we had that with uh, goldfishes. And, you know, it was it was fine. It was, you know, we were in pairs and we each one of us had their goldfish. It's a bread. <laughs> it's one of those, um, you know, double loaf things. Yeah, no, it was not very pet friendly, but it was in like the 90s. So. Uh, and uh, yeah, when we had the, the fishes in the classroom, I don't know why, but some not nice guys in our class uh, decided that they would put vinegar in our fishbowl 
and yeah it was it's, it's i swear i could have punched him if i was not in such distress emotionally back then like what what the heck is wrong with you guys fucking psychos Did your class have a class pet at some point we had a few um hamsters in like biology class but it it sort of was always a really weird endeavor and i don't want to get into detail about this anecdote because it's it's kind of a really weird one it, it's not necessarily super duper nice and i know i don't want to cause distress for people in chat but i hope that they've stopped having class pets because the the overall success rate of those is not super good you know if you think back back on it it's kind of crummy what the, what's that application this paper is weird If I learn any, if anything from TV, this guy is a serial killer, right? Two things. He's, he's either a serial killer or a very nice person. Because it's either you really feel bad in the moment and you regret it for the rest of your life. Or you're indeed a psychopath and you end up being a serial killer. Yeah, they put vinegar in our fish tank to see what it would do. Well, guess what? I don't think fishes likes vinegar. I was so mad at them. We were trying so hard to help the fishes, but we had no idea what was going on. It was like a prank. Uh, and me and the person I was with, with it, like the, the other kiddo for this specific fish ball, we were so distressed because we couldn't figure out what was wrong. We tried changing the water, but it was kind of too late, so... Yeah, can we just stop having class pets? How stupid is that? Oh, Otto, I wonder what's for dinner. Mmm, dinner. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we need to to move on to happier topics. Yeah, the only class pet that I can sort of think is fine is stuff like um, fruit flies for experimenting, like the way genes work and all of that. Hey Heather, hi! Oh, I forgot to mud you up. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Can I can I sort of do that now? Let's see. First I gotta find where my cursor went to. So Miss Heather add logs. Yeah yeah. I <laughs> forgot what day of the week it was. That's not necessarily a bad thing in, in, on most days. topics like watercolor paints um, if you guys could see my stash of things I have to review I, I really need to get on with it <laughs> is there anything in particular you would like to see a video about just curious Silkworms as class pets. That's so not for you, Otto. I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. What's dinner, by the way? Not related to the topic one bit. Is it... Uh... Kebab? I am using uh, Schminke. I used the magenta and yellow... I use the magenta... Here, right here. I used the magenta and this orange yellow for the ears. For the light gray, I used palette mud that's probably um, ultramarine blue and one of those browns, probably this one, burnt umber. I used yellow ochre for the oranger markings. The eyes are this yellow for now. The bread is a mix of like burnt sienna, yellow ochre, a bit of orange. The belt is palette mud and the shirt is also a bit of a palette mud, but the shirt is super diluted yellow ochre, uh, palette mud gray and a tiny bit of magenta in it. Chinese! It's everything- oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! So hold on, it's um, battered deep fried carrots with... Uh, hmm. So gluten, carrots, what else? I know it's not nuts because nuts are th too much of an allergy to be in there. So it probably has noodles and rice and tofu and... Looks like there are 32 watching now. That's a kind of a... I think it had gone a tiny bit up than that. But yeah, that's around the um oh the name of the yellow orange. Um let's hope I wrote it on the pan. I did not No idea. It's the yellow orange that comes with the 24 color set, so Trying to catch up on chat. Oh, why is it in top chat? YouTube, pain in the ass. Live chat, why would I want to read top chat? Who needs top chat? No one. Oh, sorry. I'm just really, really annoyed.
<laughs> uh, spicy, spicy prawns, sweet and sour pork with rice. I do skip on the carrots though. I do have my limits on self abuse. Well, I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, it's the one from Jackson's. I'm sure I have the colors somewhere, but oh, hold on. I think they're right there. <gasps> It is a uh, chrome yellow deep lead free, so color 213. It's PY65. Yeah. Looks about right. What are you um, mildly allergic to, Otto? Uh, top chat and live chat is, uh, if you look at the top of the chat window, top left uh, there is a like a menu thingy it says live chat or top chat and you can switch it and I think live chat is what it says it's like chronological live chat and top chat is YouTube that for some reasons decides which comments are m more important than others and doesn't put it in, in chronological order Well, palette mud is probably the most used color. Not that I like calling it mud, but yeah. Someone talked about all the stash of stuff that I have to to talk about. Um, yeah, it's really complex. There's a few Prima palettes in there. Um, vintage paints. Uh, more uh, acrylic gouache. And a few Cutman sets. <laughs> because I, I like paint, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I just don't like using mud as a descriptive for whatever colors on the palette. That's a like a bit peeve. This paper is weird. Top chat is no bueno. <laughs> vintage paints review the vintage paints first yeah uh they're i'm really excited to get them because i've had them for a while and it's taken me quite some time to get everything ready for them um but hold on i had a point uh yeah i have to clear some footage though there is a couple of things that i have already filmed footage for and I'm a bit um, running low on space on my hard drive and my camera. Palette tint. Palette juice. There, I'm gonna call it palette juice. <laughs> um, yeah, so I kind of need to clear a few uh, videos first to make room for newer stuff. I've done uh, reviews of Kramer paints. I've reviewed the Earth color set. And I think I've talked about uh, the other Kramer colors I have in a, another video. Palette dirt. Well, that's kind of the same connotation as mud, you know.
This is a slanted edge Cazenail brush. It's quite handy. I like the, the slanted edge because on one side you can go really fine detail like in small areas but you can also blob it out really well like cover large areas with it no problem. Oh, chaos! Hi! Organic convenience mixes. So, OCMs. <laughs> Palette leftovers. <laughs> Bye, Steven. Have a great weekend. Um, how am I enjoying the Fabriano so far? It's weird. It really likes dust. <laughs> like, even when I paint on arches, there is not as much dust on my painting as what I'm seeing now. I don't know what's up with that. Like, this is a brand new pad that I unwrapped, like, yesterday. Palette soup. <laughs> Today's OCM is brought to you by Schminke. Schminke! For great colors that you can rely on. So I, I am not sure I would, like, I, I need, still need to get through this block, I guess, to really have a good impression. But if the impression stays the same, I don't think I would necessarily buy this paper again. Not that it's bad, but, I mean, I wouldn't bother seeking it out since as it's more expensive and I kind of prefer the Archer's one. Schminke needs to paint. I wish they would. I'm like, uh, like not on purpose, not not in the goal of being sponsored or anything. But I am shilling really hard for Schminke. Like they are my. Well, I guess it's mostly because like if I were <laughs> someone like Iraville with a really big, um, um, social media presence or something, perhaps they would consider shilling me a bit more. Uh, shilling me, sponsoring me a bit more. Because it's always about what would bring them money, but... I will sell out. I, I you know, I don't mind. <laughs> it doesn't um, show as much once the paper is dry, but so far I find that this... Um, paper when it's wet with a wash it kind of looks like hot press like you know it has this mottled um, look as if you had rubbed the paper so much it peeled all expensive are schminky paints in Canada the disgustingly expensive which is why I usually order them from Sh Jackson's It is like 20 Canadian dollars for a series one tube of a schminke paint. In what I hope is 15 milliliters. Those better not be the five milliliters one. I've never really checked because I saw the price, like the starting price and I was like, nope, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> yeah, dust seems to really enjoy being on this paper and it's kind of motley and weird. I don't really run into this when I'm using arches, which is why I find it a bit weird. Uh, Crammer paint, did you like them? Yes. Do I use them much? Not really. Uh, they are a very specific set. 
the earth color set is kind of unique and it's not good for every single purpose but um, then again I also have a lot of sets so it's kind of difficult to use them all sometimes I see a set and I'm like oh, I wish I used this one more but then needs to support F's channel. Daniel Smith needs to support your channel. I agree. They really do. I'm pretty sure you've boosted their sales of many colors through your videos. Kind of a bummer though how... Um, I mean, from interactions so far, like Daniel Smith, they have a decent customer service, but they're kind of stingy. Like I've never seen them send out... Um, samples to promote them like when Schminke, Schminke had all these new colors they send out like dot cards and tubes to people to try them out and talk about them and create some buzz I guess but like even when Daniel Smith had the new colors and now I think they have a, a new color like a turquoise color PB16 and everybody's is super excited for it and and like I, they haven't really reached out to anyone as far as I know or perhaps you need to be like G names to sort of get their attention It is really different from uh, Arches, definitely. And now I'm moving on to a hack sheet of a pad of Windsor and Newton Gold Press. Because I need for the other one to dry before I can put color pencil on it. Yeah, my goal is to add color pencils on top of... Um, those uh, test painting. Hold on. This is unbearable. What is this? Hey Joy, hi! Oh, that's awesome. Um, oh Nancy, do you use color pencil on top of Fabriano paper? No, uh, Nancy, you need to talk to Sterling. <laughs> that would be the two of you that are meh on arches. Now I'm going to be super original and I'm going to draw an elf. Pencil and hot press. Well, I have cold press. 
Oh my gosh, hot press is difficult to use. Oh no, Otto, you're super meh with arches. No. Yeah, that's true. The Strathmore 500 precuts are quite smooth. It's really fluctuating here. It's super humid in the wind in the summer and it's super dry in, in the winter. Uh, Arches hot press is a bit of a mess. Especially if you've been with OMS. What's OMS? Yeah, uh, curries sell fluid a lot. I don't know why. It's it's it's, yeah, well, it's it is what it is. the white dots of the arches. Huh. Do I have an arches painting nearby? Oh yeah. I don't know why, but I don't run into it that much. I don't know why. Maybe it's the paint. Anyway, I don't feel like I I have any sort of that going on. At least not on this one. Hmm. Oh, Otterless Mineral Spirits. Oh, that's the thing to smooth out the 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 pencils. Well, if you guys don't like arches, I'll take it off your hands. You can give me all the arches you don't like. Oh yeah, no, full sheets are a nightmare to send out. I'm glad you found the Santos Waterford to work fine. Uh, Santos Waterford is not the paper that I can easily find around here, and when I do, it's like 
really expensive. Oh yeah, that's a point. Or just blocks coming your way. I'm not gonna complain. And I will use them. Yeah, it would be super heavy. Well, you could probably make it into handmade sketchbooks and sell those. Heather <laughs> says, send unwanted clothes to Goodwill, send unwanted arches to Ev. So Ev is starting an arches watercolor paper rescue center. Got it. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Well, are they faulty or is it just the way Arches paper is made? Because if that's just the way Arches is made, well... I'm trying to grab red lead from this package of assorted colored lead. The sizing felt, yeah, but I mean, is it, is it flawed paper or is it just the way 
every art should sheet and pad and all that is made. Because if you got faulty paper, I would write to arches and be like, hey guys, I have like a, a big, big load of paper here that um, has sizing issues. So can you, can you guys help me out? It's not like arches paper is cheap, you know. says my cousin's Scottish husband and I were discussing differences between Denmark and Scotland and he was like the biggest difference is that half your candy aisle is not candy it's licorice ew that's hilarious What now, Heather? <laughs> the only black licorice stuff that I've seen is either, you know, the 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 soft, weird candy like the the pipe with the little sprinkles at the opening and the other one i've seen is the the black licorice jelly bean jelly bellies and blah. you only get burned once if you don't like the black licorice jelly beans 
Because every time you see a jelly bean that is super dark, now you squish it open. And if it smells of licorice, you toss it in the garbage bin. If it smells of chocolate, you're like, okay, I can eat this one. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Alex says, 100% unrelated anecdotal information. If you're making static electricity pitting kitty, touch their skin, read, hold their paw, and you'll stay grounded. Maximum pets, no shocks. Just saying. Definitely gonna try that. This is just a test, so I'm gonna keep this really simple. Because otherwise, I'm gonna start f fussing about it and trying to make it work, and it's just gonna be not productive. I need to practice drawing humanoids more, but it's hard to do. Licorice all sorts. Ugh. But those are like this soft, squishy thing, no? Yeah, it's really, it's really uh, funny to um, to pet a steady key cat in the dark because you see all the little shocks. Always makes me laugh. But the cats, they don't like it usually. <laughs> They're like, whoa, hey, whoa, no. Yikes, stop it. <laughs> no, that's not the color I was looking for. That's more like it. An ice cube tray palette is a really, really good idea. Especially if you can get an ice tray with the lid on. Wow, that paint doesn't move at all. <laughs>
So far, I think I prefer the Windsor and Newton cold press to the Fabriano cold press. It's a bit more what I'm used to. I'm sorry. No, it's not a specific character, it's just something I improvised on on the paper. Using my my printed references as well reference as best I can because my printer is <laughs> something. Can trade you can have my arches for your Fabriano deal <laughs> oh no the live stream stopped oh savory pies my grandpa used to do onion pies <laughs> Chaos has so much in common with Linus. Oh yeah, the pets that, that cannot stop. It's always funny. And you kind of feel bad for laughing, but then again, it's your fault for running full speed in the wall. I mean, what? How am I supposed to react to that? No. <laughs> Um, Linus's mom told me a really funny story the other day. Uh, Linus really likes to go on a specific shelf where his human dad keeps all sorts of paper and junk and whatnot. And it's sort of the shelf that, you know, you put stuff there and at some point you're like, I, I should really sort it out and you s just don't. And you're just like, meh. Well, the thing is, is Linus goes there and he likes to throw everything on the ground. Like, he will go on the shelf and just push things on the floor. <laughs> so that, that made it so his human dad had to clean up the shelf and it made me laugh. Oh, onion pie is delicious. It's the um, German or Alsatian, Alsace. Alsace. It's basically a short, um, you know, the really buttery crust on a... I don't know my, my pie words in English. But anyway, it's delicious. It has butter, flour, onions, and you put bacon on top, like like bits of bacon, and you cook it, and it's delicious. <laughs> Coming from a person who once walked into three light poles in a row, I'm so sorry for you, Lise. That sounds awful. Yeah, if you're allergic to onions, of course, you don't eat the stuff that has onion in it, but it's not as dreadful as it might sound to picture an, a pie made with onions. It's a balanced approach to, to that. <laughs> like an eggless quiche, yeah, somewhat. Yeah, eggless, cheeseless quiche. Oh no, the texture is nice because the onions are all like caramelized and soft I mean as a kid I was not someone who would be excited for an onion pie but that one that one was always a winner
<laughs> oh, no, that's fine. I mean... I wouldn't put that on account of not being smart. I would put it on account of being distracted or not having your glasses on. Onion bread is delicious too. There's a local bakery that has... Um, it makes a uh, sun-dried tomato and caramelized onion bread. And it's good. We discovered the red dot bug. <laughs> we also discovered the slickest floor in the room. It just so happens to be at the end of a long straight away. Oh no, Heather. Is there a chaos imprint on the door? Oh, raw pickled red onions. I've, I've kind of seen that around. Is it good? Oh, onion pie sounds delish. Thank you, Nancy. Yes. Uh, where do you get the Windsor Newton CPF? Uh, ordered from Jackson's. Sorry, I'm sort of seeing a bunch of messages that I hadn't seen before. I shall live vicariously through that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, time flies. Yeah. The the similarly in the same vein of stuff, the it happened once in our previous apartment that was basically a really long corridor and like every room was attached to that corridor, but it was a long stretch of corridor. And one night I went to the bathroom, so I I came out of the bedroom, walked to the end of the corridor, and the room at the end of the corridor was the bathroom and it did my thing in the bathroom came out of the bathroom, walked back towards the, the bedroom in the corridor, but I don't know why, like, it was not the first time I would do this, this, you know, this, this travel thingy. And I, I miscalculated and I slammed into the wall as if the door was there. So I went BAM in the door, but I was a solid three feet, solid three feet away from the door. And I bam in the wall and it woke Mr. E up and he was like, whoa, what's up? And I was like, oh, I I missed the door. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> oh, fish pie. I kind of like salmon pie. Mm, salmon pie. It's basically salmon potato in a pie crust with crust on the top. Some people add cream and stuff in there, but it's delicious with just salmon and potato and like seasonings. I'm sorry, but I think I would be laughing too if one of my friends was distracted and slammed into the light poles three times in a row. Kind of funny. <laughs> Onions are anti-angiogenic. They are also very difficult to digest at some points. <laughs> I don't tend to use them often because now I have a heart. I'm I'm getting old and I can digest them as well. <laughs> oh geez. Toke says, once I fell down from a tree in kindergarten and now I have a scar on my cheek because my cheek had to be soon back together. And Lana says, yes, fish pie is fish, potatoes, dill, and onions in Russia. No cream. That sounds delicious. Oh my gosh. Is it any kind of fish? Do you have a specific fish that is sort of the classic fish pie? I wish they made more um, fish pies without the cream or milk in it. Because I would definitely eat more of it. It's just a really handy thing to have in the winter because you can freeze it, fr freeze it, and um, then if you are running late for like dinner or something, you can just put it in the oven. 
and it it has it makes leftovers usually I'm almost 60 but I will not give up my onions well awesome <laughs> Oh, the thing is with onions, though, is that whenever I eat them, then I sort of smell like onions, and it and it bugs me. Not remember, but I think different kind of fishes were used, huh? The um sort of traditional meal of the place where I grew up when I was really really young, it's called the it's called giblotte, and it's basically uh, a stew with white fish in it and a bunch of veggies and potatoes and the broth is like tomato based you order Windsor Newton paper from Jackson's I ordered a pad once I think but I might have gotten it somewhere else I don't really remember but I think it came from Jackson's I am not dairy intolerant per se as sort of it's an intolerance with casein so if something has butter in it, it's fine. But if something has like a lot of milk protein in it, it's not fine. <laughs> really not fine. Hey, Diane, hi. The Sarah has Windsor and Newton paper blocks. Do they have the pads too? Because if so, that's maybe that's where I got it. But I'm liking it. I don't know if it's more cost effective than uh, arches would be, but it's so far it seems to be a really nice cotton paper. Doesn't seem to do that white dot thingy, but it's hard to say since I haven't really put any dark colors on there. You can totally make a white sauce without milk, butter, flour, cream. What do you put in there then? But I mean, I'm, I I know, I know one can, but like, they don't usually tend to do that in store bought pies. <laughs> oh yeah, cheeses are a disaster. We were speaking about um, fresh cheese curds yesterday, and yeah, I I cannot I cannot eat it at all. I tried once, I, I ate like a tiny curd and and there was much regret. Do you drink pickled cucum cucumber? <laughs> Cucumber water with vodka. What? What? Oh, Lee, um, are you... Are you casein? Oh, ooh! You're like the only other people I've I've met so far that has the same kind of issue. It's just really difficult to try to explain that to people because whenever you say I can't have dairy, they're like, "Oh, are you lactose intolerant?" And you're like, "No," <laughs> because if you're lactose intolerant, you can still have dairy, you know, especially now. But yeah, and then I'm like, "No, it's dairy protein." And you see some people, their eyes glaze over, and you're like, "Oh, I lost them." But yeah, it's like everything, yogurt, cheese, cream, oh, milk, all that is out, but butter is fine. But Well, butter is fine, I mean, as, as long as you still use a regular amount of butter, you know. Like, I can eat a croissant. Eat a croissant? Oh, you just need fat and any kind of flour. I make mine with olive oil and oat flour. Do you add water to make it more... Um, liquidy because the fat and the flour that makes a roux but then you have to add some sort of liquid in there do you probably use oat milk though ah the fish pies are never store bought only made at home oh man no 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 <laughs> the process of making cheese doesn't break down the casein one bit no 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 it's the milk protein it 
might break down the sugar if you get some really old cheeses because I think the older cheese don't have as much lactose in them but no 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 protein is all there sadly <laughs> sometimes people cut cucumbers in half and hollow them out and fill them with vodka that's terrifying <laughs> hey a nice cucumber and then you, you're drunk well, you have you have casein paint, and it it's plasticky. It's a bit like acrylic. So yeah, I'll make you an F safe fish pie. Ah, yay! <laughs> well, if I were like less lazy, I could probably also make one myself. Oh yeah, stock. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, I've made a uh, who with all sorts of things too that are not um, dairy. Because if you want to make a good uh, mac and cheese, you need to make a, a roux at some point. And you can use fake cheese in it. It works. But yeah, I would use olive oil as well and any kind of flour and then you add some liquid to it. Seasoned diluted tahini. It's cucumber glasses. Okay. Shot glasses. All right, I was my goal was to paint the dress. I can do this. Um, James Gurney uses casein a lot, casein paint. Yeah, when I when I was trying to figure out what was my issue with dairy, it was kind of funny because the first thing you try is to remove lactose to see if that's the thing. So. There, there, there are all sorts of um, lactose-free, you know, milk and cheeses and all of that. So I tried that, but it was still feeling awful. So, like, definitely not the thing. And then you ask a bit about it, and people are like, "Oh, try a goat milk yogurt or goat cheese." And nope, that is not exactly helping. And then I just like, you know what? I'm, I'm just gonna stop eating it altogether because ugh. But then I ate some croissant and I was fine. So I was like, huh, hmm. What's that? Baller, Baller L. Carey? What is that? thing though with this brush I gotta be careful when I lift it off the paper because it tends it tends to send droplets flying around so I end up with droplets of color in places I might not necessarily want them As long as you can eat croissant, yeah. That that was my that was my that's where my brain my brain went to. I was like, yeah, as long as I can eat croissant, I'm fine. <laughs> that means I can eat baklava and um, and you know turnovers. So I was like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> now, oddly enough, through not eating a lot of it, now I struggle to 
eat actual butter on things. Like, if I buy... Once or twice it happened that we bought butter, like actual butter, and I was like, it still tastes kind of cheesy. And I was like, ugh, I've really outgrown that taste. So it's difficult now to just... To just, you know... I, I buy margarine. Margarine? Fake butter? I'm like, ah, it's all good. It translates to balls and curry. It's boiled meatballs in a curry sauce with was Oh, that sounds awesome. Well, baklava is made with honey, so... I miss cheese. The substitutes are either terrible or expensive. Well, I don't know. I, I've i made peace with the substitutes and I will eat either some Deya or the Nafsika's fake cheese. Because those are quite good, actually. The Nafsika's ones? Dude, their fake Parmesan is really legit. I think they made like a deal with some sort of magical entity because their fake cheese is really, really good. And I was like, whoa, what? And you look at the ingredients and it's like really simple. And I'm like, like even Otto could probably eat them. There is no soy, no, 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 no flour, no rice, no, what else? no tofu in there. So I was like, whoa, can you use clarified butter? Um, I've used brown butter. I haven't tried um, clarified butter. Are you allergic to cats for real, Ether? <laughs> if so, I'm sort of amazed that you haven't, like, um, gotten used to it. <laughs> I make sure to have plenty of exposure so it doesn't become a problem, yeah. I think you're, um, you're fine on that front. I'm not too worried about that. That's hilarious, though. <laughs> yeah, Otto is the cold standard of allergies. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, but it's it's like... It's so sad, but at the same time, it's like... It's kind of easy to remember what you can eat, because it's, it's oats. And um, stuff that are not carrots. And meat. <laughs> Unless I forgot something. Some of the most common foods though like uh, you know all the cereals and and all the soy products that are in everything now it's kind of like ugh. i hope we will sort of grow out of this notion at some point because it's really not helping people with sensitivities and allergies I really am allergic to cats. <laughs> hey, bye Nancy. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a great weekend. I make balls and curry. The name is hilarious. It tra the tra the translated name. Blah. Also, I'm not necessarily the most mature person <laughs> in the world. Haha, <laughs> balls and curry. Can you imagine the challenge of putting together a, a buffet that all of us could eat at? It's like a nightmare. There would be like water, plain water, that's all. Just. There you go, a bunch of burrita filters and deal with it.
Is anyone allergic to water? That does happen. <gasps> that sounds impossible. Tried lentils to tweet. Uh, how did the lentils go? Lentils are delicious. Quinoa, huh? Make sure you rinse your quinoa before eating it because it tastes like soap otherwise. Oh, I feel sorry for you, Patricia. That doesn't sound... Well, I'm pretty sure you can be creative with it, but still. Good news can have black coffee. Well, at least there's that. Allergic to red meat. Not as far as I know, though. Lentils have been great so far. Lentils are so good. There's a tick that causes meat allergy, apparently. No ticks! My nemesis. I really don't like ticks. Ugh. Disgusting creatures. Err. <laughs> really hate ticks. Ugh. What do you do with your lentils? It depends. If I have red lentils, uh, you know, they're the ones that become really mushy. I often make um, curry with it. Like I will um, cook them in water and then add veggies and then, uh, or whatever we want, meat. And then I add uh, coconut milk and whatever curry powder you want to use. So it has a bit. Uh, it adds a bit of protein into the um, the the whole thing. Or if you buy like canned lentils, um, they're really nice in in spaghetti sauce. I've also had them just like lentils with grilled veggies and yeah, like the big ball, and you mix it up. Lone Star Tick. Well, all the ticks should burn in hell. <laughs> ah. They've made... They've ruined all the fun of walking in the woods. You, you can have coconut, right? So I was thinking that curry might be something you would enjoy. But they are really nice in curry. We often make curry with uh, like the lentils and then I had potatoes and whatever veggies, other veggies I feel like, and the coconut milk and the spices. It's really nice. It's perfect for winter because it's all warm and spicy. I don't like having coconut in everything and it's kind of a trend sometimes to have coconut in everything like coconut oil and coconut and blah. but curry with coconut milk is, is is one of those that doesn't get it, it doesn't get like too much it's always good Ticks and wasps, nightmare fuel. Oh yeah, lentil sloppy joe, that's a good one. Well, it's a bit, a bit like really chunky spaghetti sauce. Salmonella is awful. I started going into kidney failure. F what, Heather? No!
Anyone here ever eat pho? 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 It's a great soup. Oh yeah, lentil soup. That's delicious too. Still in frame, somewhat. So far, this Windsor Newton paper feels really, really similar to uh, to arches. It's not doing the weird thing with the dust and the paper texture as the Fabriano did. I wonder if the outer drawing will be dry enough to test out the color pencil on it. I hope so, because <laughs> the stream has been going on for quite some time and I still haven't got around to that part of it. Right. Switch room. Seems to be quite putting the brushes to dry. <laughs> oh, so Heather, you need to, sorry, you need to turn the AC up when the sun is going down. Uh, paper, this one is Fabriano Cold Press. And the other one was Windsor Newton Cold Press. All right. Ah, that's gonna be bothersome. Pencils will probably be polychromos, because that's kind of what I have. They're they're in a in a thingy on my desk with drawers. Assuming I can put this back in. Fabriano, humanoid is Windsor Newton. Yep. 
increase the target temperature. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, so you lowered the AC. I only I only know how heating works. I'm gonna try this new sharpener. I love the smell of color pencils. Mm, I don't have my cat reference with me. I forgot to check which page it was. Oh, this one. It's confusing. Some people say up but lower the number. Hmm. Because usually with, with a heater when you put the number up it gets hotter. But I would have thought that with an AC if you put the AC up it's gonna be more cold. But maybe it's not. pretty textured as a paper so I guess that if you want to apply some colored pencil on this uh, you would sort of need to take that into consideration though I think it's quite nice for the type of uh, coat this cat has because it looks kind of textured it you know it's like mottled a bit such a nice kitty It's a person chinchula. That doesn't sound like something I will enjoy. Oh, poor thing. Okay. Anyone try Sinelli paper? I love it, but can't find it anywhere in Canada or Jackson's. I think I have a pad of Sinelli, and I got it at um, uh, the university store or the store of the university of quebec <laughs> sorry i think i haven't tried it yet though it's in my list of um papers to try with um, colored pencils too.
Yeah, it's still pretty patchy. Like, I, I know that hot press would probably be what I'm looking for, but I'm, I'm not yet able to make hot press paper work for me. Oh, though, oddly enough, I can make the... I was looking at all the drawings and for some weird reason I was able to do fine on blocks of Arches hot press. But when I tried the pad of hot press, it, it, it was kind of a nightmare, I think. So, um... <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I don't move enough. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really fun sound, but it's not the result I want, so I'm kind of bothered. That's why I'm experimenting with it today. I'll buy the hot press. Well, I'm not buying any hot press paper anytime soon. Uh, it's been too much of a, um, a, a series of, of failed... Anyway, I still have some of the Arches hot press pads, uh, blocks I have. And they are quite old, they were gifts. So maybe they date back to a time when the paper was better. Because when I tried the pad, it was it was not a great experience. But yeah, I was looking at the paintings I did, the few paintings I did on the blocks, and I was like, huh, hold on a second, that's that's hot press, and it's not like abysmal. What's up with that? People are so um, split between having Fabriano as their favorite paper and really hating Fabriano paper. It's kind of funny. So far the details in black have been sort of the most successful in terms of what I wanted to achieve. So I don't know if it's because I'm I'm using a point and not adding in like flat colors but like tracing elements instead of trying to make a gradient, if that makes sense. I should try it. I'm sure you don't deliver it to the Yukon. Are you are you in Yukon? Oh no, Lee. I'm so sorry about that. That sounds awful. I think I think laying down sounds like a good idea. <laughs>
It's almost 11 p.m. Took you ow. That's late. Yeah, and it's almost five here, so I might not have time to do the other drawing in terms of testing color pencil. I will for sure be posting it on on my um, Patreon and eventually on Instagram as well. Might not even have time to finish this one. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you liked it, Otto. I was I was really considering your your um your your um how can I say that your your person? <laughs> but yeah, I was looking at them and I was like, I didn't I don't choose them, but in the pile I had like I had the pile of envelopes and I had the pile of paintings and I would like take a painting, take an envelope, and there you go. And when I got to Otto, I took the painting, I took the envelope, and I was like, yep. <laughs> That's gonna pan out fine. It usually does. I mean, it's it's quite fortunate because uh, most of the time, whenever I, I put the paintings together with the, um, the recipients, uh, I've never really felt like they were badly matched. Random does a good thing. <laughs> anyway, all that to say that I'm glad you liked it. has happened once when I was putting together um, Patreon bundles that I got to a random match and I was like, hmm. And that was the only time that I sort of felt like it would be better off to switch to randoms and I did, but otherwise I'm always quite happy with the way it... Uh, It works out. I hope the other paintings will get to their um recipients too. Oddly enough, my my mom is on my Patreon, so it was kind of funny to put together a painting to send to her.
that was a fairly decent collection of <laughs> things I've painted. <laughs> I was also considering putting some of the past drawings that I've made uh, maybe available for sale at some point because they are really piling up and um, like I, I don't necessarily have a need to keep all of them once I've scanned them usually I'm, I'm kind of set but then again I don't know if if, if that would be an appealing enough thing that it's it's worth it to put the uh, the time in it i can see auto opening a museum of ev's art one day <laughs> There is something to be said though for being able to have a, a museum show of one's artwork. It's something that I find really fascinating because I've worked... I want to be the biggest collectors. Aww! But yeah, in uh, the old Montreal there's a lot of galleries and uh, it happened a few times that I worked, like my workplace was in that area so whenever I would walk towards the subway station I would have to walk along all the galleries and like like sort of see what they are and I mean it's gotta be really exciting to have a, a solo show or something but then again I don't know if if it works if you don't have any connections in this world like what are your chances of being able to land the solo show on uh, until you're like super famous and old Though I would love to see Otto's paintings in a museum too. They are amazingly prettier and better than what I would see in the galleries walking to and from work. Like I think it happened once that I was walking past a gallery and I saw the work that was exposed there and I was like Huh, that's that's lovely. That's that's pretty. But it happened once. Sometimes I would see things that I was like I I, I don't un understand. <laughs> what those worst nightmare streams of people visiting to see the collection. Yep. <laughs> I can see that. But yeah, some, some artworks in there. I, I know artwork is subjective and all of that, but way too many of them were either... Aww. <laughs> I'm so glad the auto mug... Uh, the auto mug. I keep substituting every pet name for Otto's name. What's wrong with me? <laughs> Sorry, I'm broke. Duck tape bananas to wall, yeah. Yeah. Some of the, the stuff I've seen was like really <sighs> Okay, one one time it was you know like the um the 
edgy street art take on like I will paint Disney Disney stuff like Mickey Mouse but it will be a melty Mickey Mouse and you're like yeah okay and the other time it was um, it was like s some cartoony artwork but really really clumsily made and like it didn't depict anything that I thought was um, interesting I guess is what I'm trying to say I keep breaking myself and Denmark there's a famous artist and what he's known for is that it looks like a kid grid and apparently people like that uh, yeah that, that there's quite a few like that and I mean fine fine it's subjective but then again like like fine fine it's subjective when do we get to the subjectively good part of it <laughs> oh no i think i broke a too. popular art apparently can't be good yeah well, there's this weird thing that happens in, in art schools too. Like, if you try to do figurative art in certain fine fine art classes, you get you get scolded by your um, scolded. Anyway, your teacher is not happy with you, and they try to really force you to express yourself in certain ways. But isn't the whole point of self expression to be personal like if my form of self-expression is drawing anime stuff that I should be allowed to to have that be considered my form of expression you know but no if you try to draw something that is too figurative they're like I don't know. from what I've heard I mean I didn't go to fine art stuff in school But I've seen some pretty weird pieces of art in the um, plastic arts department. <laughs> hey, Tsukabu. Good night. Have fun with the puppies. What did I miss? Um, I did the thing again where I replaced a pet's name with your name. And I mentioned the Otomug. <laughs> I wish I knew. Aside from the fact that my brain is stupid. But yeah, I started laughing and then I started choking and then I coughed and... Yeah. Also, I was ranting about about galleries and stupid art. The booby camel postcard. Yeah, that that's... But, I mean, I would still prefer that one to um, the, 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 the cartoony stuff I saw once. <laughs> I've already admitted my undying love to you, Otto. Hey, thank you so much for being here, Kukatsujan. I hope I didn't butcher that too much. Kukatsunjan. Have a great weekend. Do suffer pushing your our way where you're not doing Yeah, that was the, the main thing. Not entirely sure what's the goal of controlling how people self-express, but I mean, fine, fine. Going back to that, the gnarly cartoony art that I didn't like. It it reminded me of something. You know, when you have a. I can't find a good a, a good example of it, but it was just so not my cup of tea, and I was like. 
This is in a gallery in, in downtown Montreal where there's a lot of really rich people that goes to visit, especially during the... Uh, when there's the um, racing car event, the F Formula One in Montreal. <laughs> Blah. Yeah, this paper is, in the end, I think it's not so bad for details if you don't try to make too large areas. Like, I don't like how it looks on the paws, but for for detailing, it's, you know, it, it doesn't, it's quite, quite decent, I would say. That's kind of why I think it's weird that you can study art in a way. Like, if you study um, uh, art history, that's something else. That's different. That's fine. I mean, art history is super interesting. But then you also have, like, how can someone evaluate you on your self-expression? So if you have classes that are more like, this is how one uses acrylic, that's fine. In fact, I wish they were more like that. Uh, Ether says, supposedly if it brings out an emotional response and makes one think it is good art. Yeah, but the thing is, it's not the same thing is going to make me think and someone else think, you know. So, so that's where it's sort of weird to try and quantify and and give a you know a grade on on art but you can always evaluate and grade someone on how they use the medium that's something that is you know if someone ends up with a super blotchy painting and that was not the intention well that's not something you can count in their favor but if someone like uses the medium in a way that gives a good a good effect. But why is blech a more artsy response than aw? No idea. Maybe rich people need to generate some suffering. <laughs> I think we need to eat all the rich people. This is the moment where you realize you don't really have a color pencil in the color you're looking for. Well, I think this one is going to do fine. It is the gold pencil, but metallic pencils are never really metallic. And I'm going to use this pencil sharpener for the first time. Good job. Good point. Doesn't seem to have broken any lead. Scandinavian art is lovely, usually. From what I've seen, it's something that I know I enjoy. If we eat all the rich people, wouldn't that at some point make us rich? Well, no, because you eat them, they're just gone. If somebody new get becomes a rich person, then we need to eat them too. I 
I think I mentioned it last time, but the, the article I saw with the uh, like the rich people saying what was their holiday vacations like, like what are your holiday plans? And it was like in, insane stuff, like oh I'm spending New Year's in the lodge uh, in the Alps and then uh, for Christmas we are going to a retreat in the Caribbean, uh, blah blah blah, and you're like what? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? And you can say that with a straight face on. Okay. Fine. I can, do you, are you aware of how many people want to punch you in the face? Just saying, just, you know, just, just asking. Yeah, but if you eat them, then at some point one of us will be the richest person in the world. No, because eating them doesn't mean you acquire their richness. It just means that they're gone. They cannot be problematic anymore. And I guess the goal would be to redistrib redistrib redistribute the richness in a way that is not so uneven. Like, I don't think there's a way that there cannot be rich people, but I think there's a way we could sort of even it a bit that there is less overly, absurdly rich people versus... Oops, that, that moved the camera a lot. Versus incredibly poor people. Like, it's too far up, too far down. We need to... <laughs> could, could we bring them in a tiny bit? Just a, just a bit? Like, there is no way someone that rich can use all that money in their life anyway, so... Why not? Yeah, I mean, if I was eating the rich person, I wouldn't want their money. I would want to... to try and solve some problems with it. I thought police is gonna shut my door. <laughs> but then the, here's a question, when are you rich? Well, you can be rich, you cannot be stupid rich. <laughs> like people with, the, the, the people who are, have a value of like billions of dollars or whatnot, I mean, what's the point? How much can you use in one lifetime? Why have so much extra? What's, what's the, it's the whole freaking concept. No, you can redistribute redistribute the money without owning it. Anyway, let's just It's just really surreal to see how some situations are uh, set up because you're like there is a solution I mean or there is a, not necessarily a full solution but there is ways that this could be helped and we are going out of our ways to sort of not use them because it would hurt some feelings somewhere and you're like well this is no longer about hurting your feelings or whatnot I mean Anyway, that's just my two cents. And I'm, an I'm an artist, I'm not a politician, so what do I know? I just don't like seeing people being unhappy for reasons that are completely made up and that could be fixed if we tried a bit harder, you know? I 
I think wealth is all about the distance between the social classes. I agree. I would agree with that. I really think we could, like, instead of having, like, super low and super high, we could pfft, squish it a bit. It is complex, but sometimes I wonder if it has to be complex or if we made it this complex just because it gives a reason to not fix anything. Oh, but it is hard. And like, yeah, well, everything is hard. Anyway, I'm, I'm just ranting, I guess. I'm old. I can rant. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you on that, Amisha. There's... With the caveat that I didn't look into the issue very deep, but it's it's kind of surreal to see that they are making rich people pay less taxes. Because you're like, mm, wait, why? <laughs> what the f... <laughs> C'est le bando, il se le top de son... Euh... C'est la parade. Ça n'a pas de bon sens. Le clown, il a tellement de l'air derrière la vie, là. C'est euh, tu sais, le gros badass qui est avec toi, puis le chick qui est là avec lui. <rire> son bain, <bien> what? <rire> Yeah, that's a that's a weird that's one of those weird situations where you're like, how can people work full time and not be able to pay their bills? How did we get there? <laughs> Why is that an actual thing? Like it gives you pause because you're like, wait, at some point someone saw this happen and didn't think that it was a problem and they let it what happened how is this three hours exactly oh yeah well i'm i think i'm sort of kind of done with the experiment on this one anyway and the other one well that will have to be some of the time because i'm a bit exhausted <laughs> i propose we don't eat people well, I don't think the rich would taste really good, but I will. I will do it if it if it brings in results. <laughs> um. Yeah, you know, it's it's more of a metaphor than a actual need to eat people. Just in case someone somewhere has not figured that out yet. Yeah. So it's, I guess where I stand about this right now is that kind of works well if you want to add in sharper details like outlines or like the, the makeup on the cat's face. Makeup. I call it makeup, but you know what I mean. Um, aside from that, though. Oh, yeah, look. <laughs> it has decided to uh, detach on its own. All right, Fabriano. All right. Yeah, that's done. That's the weird thing. It's not the first time I get a block that has crud between the sheets. And you're like, how did that get there? Because that was properly sealed and it had a sheet over it. So what, what happened? The Windsor Newton paper looks like this now. Really not not that bad. Not, I don't think it's fully dry yet. It's close to it though. Can 
Cannibal Club. Mm. Nah. Catherine Cannibal Club. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and, well, this, the Fabriano cold press doesn't really mind the masking tape so far, which is nice. I haven't seen many papers in cold press that really don't do well with masking paper, but, you know, there might be. <laughs> as long as it's not a tick on the shit. <laughs> Yeah, no thank you. All right, so um, partial experiment, somewhat partially conclusive. <laughs> I will, I will um, share and scan and the... It's hard to say, but I think I will high res. I need to write what these are though. That's Fabriano Artistico. Cold press. <laughs> but I wrote that. Cold press CP. Okay. I think I will high res scan those and post them on Patreon at least. So that maybe seeing up close how the paper, how the pencil reacted on the paper, that might be more indicative. I, I couldn't say exactly. I find it hard to decide whether it's more like one or the other, mostly because I haven't accumulated a lot of knowledge. <laughs> I need to do more experiment on, on this, but since I have color pencils that I really would like to use more, since I have them, um, I'm definitely gonna gonna work more on that. Okay, hold on. People need to have the choice if they want to have a lot of money and buy stuff and live fancy or if they don't. Yes, but um, the thing is, is that oftentimes the very, very, very rich people, they have a lot of money and wealth that they cannot possibly use up, even while living super duper fancy. And I think that extra could probably be used to better results than just making them more wealthy. But that, that's just my two cents anyway. Um, bloop, bloop, bloop. All right, so I guess that's 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 the the main stuff, I guess. <laughs> All right, um, Heather and Otto are sharing the links in the in the chat. If you're curious about that, there's a link for the Discord. There's a link to my Patreon. The Discord is a chatting platform where we sort of keep talking about the stuff we talk during the Catherine live stream and share tips, share pet pictures, uh, vent, <laughs> um, help each other a lot. And it's, it's a really fun place. So if you feel like that's something that would interest you, you can check it out. By clicking the link, it's going to take you through the process of creating an account. And... Um, and then you can um, join up. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming to this new channel to to see the live stream. Um, hopefully it's going to work out fine. And uh, we should see each other next Saturday. Is it already over? What? Wait, what? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing it up. <laughs> it's been three hours, guys. Hold on, is it all borked up? Is it all broken again? So anyway, um, thank you guys. I hope you have a great weekend and um, see you all next time. Bye bye.